that uh, are exploring one, uh, exploring their courses and exploring uh, the results of all of uh, how students are perceiving online learning at Hostos. So um, the research question that we posed when we started this this um, this study was. What are our student perceptions for their experiences in asynchronous and hybrid courses at Hostos Community College? And as you may well know, doing research in the education field is very complex because there's so many variables uh, that you have to take into account. So even though you might have similar research questions uh, like, like this one, uh, there are always those um, parameters that are different in, in different places. So um, we, uh, we're going to be talking about the demographics so you have a sense of what we do, some information about the, the, uh, the growth of online learning at Hostos and um, uh, some lead review on, on the survey itself. So uh, we are located in the Bronx in New York and um, this is kind of an interesting um, phrase that um, Hostos uses a lot. So, yeah. Bronx is located in the poorest congressional district in the nation, and that leads to a number of challenges for our students, students that come to, to study. Uh, there was conversations about, in many of the, um, the sessions in the morning, I think there was also a conversation by the keynote about those challenges that our students face when they come to, to, um, to study. Uh, we have uh, about 65% of our students live in the Bronx. We have, uh, this has changed, this have a, lot, a lot of our students are commuting and coming from other boroughs to, um, to host us. And uh, our office is the one that is in charge of developing, implementing, and supporting faculty in innovating, becoming innovators, trying new technologies, trying new approaches, and uh, we are there to provide all the support for them. So we are one of seven community colleges. We have about 7,000 students. Uh, right now, 57% of them are full-time, 60% are female, and uh, about 59% are his Hispanic students. 23% black, so uh, you can see also that 85% are less than 30 years old, something that has also changed throughout the years. I thought we used to have students that had uh, uh, our were older than, than what we see right now. And just to give you a perspective of how we've been approaching um, uh, developing online courses at, at uh, Hostos, we uh, created a, a mentoring approach to allow faculty to be connected to a faculty member who is more experienced and who has uh, already taught an online course, this faculty member will be working with the, the developer throughout one year, and they'll be uh, providing all the support, they will be meeting depending on how they accommodate their schedules, and um, we provide a specific set of sessions, just general sessions, uh, to help faculty and guide on how the standard development um, Elements we want in this in these courses, and then we just let let faculty to be the ones who develop the courses. Um, faculty, the the stipends that are, that are provided to faculty as an incentive to them to develop the courses are uh, are connected uh, depending on the success of the development of the course. So the the mentor will get a stipend only if the developer succeeds. So that helps in creating that additional push in being able to have faculty developing those courses. The mentor stays with the developer uh, after the, the middle of the, the first part of the, um, the development process when they're gonna be teaching the course and the mentor just works with them throughout that, that period of time. It's been very successful for us. We, we've seen a steady increase. We have our own challenges being that we are community colleges uh, uh, just because we, we face a lot of developmental courses that we have to uh, offer and online learning brings their own challenges in providing this type of uh, modality to, to offer to students. So um, this is uh, how we, uh, we have the growth in, in the courses that are being offered so far. Uh, the same thing happens for asynchronous courses. So we've had some steady increase and we wanted to um, 
see how, how we can um, do now the assessment on, on, on these online courses. The uh, full-time faculty, we have about 53% of the, the full-time faculty are certified, and then from those, we have, uh, no, sorry, 33% of full-time faculty are certified, and about 14% overall are faculty certified. What I mean is faculty who have un gone through these initiatives and could develop any online courses and just um, uh, then offer those courses. So what we wanted to do in this, in this survey was we wanted to ascertain uh, the student perceptions for online learning experience. That was one of the, the main objectives. And so we had some hypotheses about, about some uh, perceptions that faculty had or some um, experiences they had while they were teaching courses. So uh, they uh, indicated that online courses were comparable to face-to-face -face courses, workload, difficulty, engagement with faculty and peers. So that was kind of the perception of or what faculty will report. Um, and then we will, this procession will vary with uh, students' prior online experiences, so that, that shifts a little bit as well. And that students will access online courses from multiple devices, multiple locations, so we wanted to assert and see whether this, this was true. And according to how the course was developed, we were, uh, indicated that uh, the course will be easy to navigate and also that the demographics of the students responding to the survey will match those of the college. So we had uh, uh, a group of students that were participating in all these online courses that um, were part of the, the survey. So the usual technology is simple technology. We use Google Docs to just uh, gather the information from the survey. We had about 33 questions. Everything was anonymous. We tried to um, provide some incentives so that students were able to, uh, to fill out this survey. We have about, in the group, of the population of students that we sent this information, we had about 72 sections. So it was a population of about 2,000 2, students that could potentially um, fill, out, fill out this survey. We provided a number of um, methods to promote this, this service so for students to fill out. And we just allowed for four weeks. That was in fall 2015, a four-week period in the spring 2016. Um, and we just depended a lot on faculty uh, for them to be able to ask their students to uh, fill out this service. And as you know, sometimes when things are voluntary basis, um, the students do or do not fill out those surveys. Uh, but nevertheless, um, we had a, a good a good response rate and. And the information that we saw between these two two semesters um, is very very similar in how how the results have happened. Um, so some brief review, as many of you know, MOOCs was one of the kind of buzzwords that everybody was talking about, and institutions engaged in creating MOOCs just because it was popular, and then now it's steady again, and everybody is now more cautious in in focusing in creating a massive of online courses. Uh, so we had uh, also in fall 2011 increase in online enrollments. There was a 0.1% decline in student population. There was an increase in online enrollments. Uh, more than 6.7 million students were enrolled at least in one online course. Over 32% of the students take one or more courses online. So this is kind of the research that we found in general, which um, helped us in, in verifying that uh, it was important to ask those questions to our students. And here is another another piece of uh, information we have. There's over 20,000 degree programs over 500 schools. Uh, there's lower total costs, more comfortable learning environment, convenience, flexibility, greater interaction, greater ability to concentrate. So those are the what the research is saying out there. We wanted to see whether this was true for our reality. Uh, here you have another one, which is similar about career advancement, continuing profession, avoiding commuting, improving your technical skills, transferability of credits, that was another one. Um, and then there's some other disadvantage, disadvantages that you might have also uh, heard depending on 
how is the, is the regulations happening in different states? Um, how can you uh, validate or, on, on accreditation of your online programs or online offerings that you have? Um, so uh, we have, um, there is also the um, little or to not face-to-face -face interaction, so that will also depend on how the course is being developed. Uh, perceptions of being more work when you have online, on, online courses. There is intel, intense requirement for self-discipline, uh, even more intense requirements for self-direction. So students are, uh, have to make sure that they have all those skills to be able to do it on their own. They, they're not going to be having uh, as much face-to-face -face connection with, with your faculty. Um, so here we have another one, flexibility and, and convenience of schedule, travel, time efficiency, self-paced learning, course availability, and then we'll see how the results that we found are pretty much connecting with, uh, with what we found in the, in the research. So we, we, it's said that it's less distractions. It all depends on the market that you're studying. Um, might be, and I think well, we can skip this. So here, um, I'm going to pass the, the mic to, um, to Wilfredo just to show you some of the results that we found on um, on how students are responding to this um, to this survey. Thanks, Carlos. Uh, more or less, like for example, these are the kind of questions that we asked in the survey. And the first one is, uh, did you realize you were signing up for a particular or fully online course when you register? Uh, this might think uh, it should be obvious for the students so that they should know whether they are doing it or not. However, that's not the case, especially because one of the systems that we use for registration is called QD First. It was implemented a couple of years ago. And that piece of information is not clear there. Some students, especially those who are now experienced using the system and they are kind of new or new, it is kind of hidden. It requires a couple of clicks to find out that the class is online. So that's why, for example, you see here, that even though the majority is saying that they were aware, we still have a, here a percentage who's not. This is more or less we will try to gather the sense of uh, which course of those who will allow.